Good afternoon, everybody. Wes Davies here. Welcome back to another video. I've got just a nice chill video for you guys today. I am about halfway between Jai City and Dolio. So we just took the train to Jai, rented a scooter. We're gonna drive up to Dolio and just taking these back roads. I have never seen anything so peaceful and idyllic. Of course, as soon as I started talking, the dog started barking, but I just had to pull over to the side of the road here. This is just quintessential rural Taiwan. We've got that beautiful little river there, a field of dragon fruit, see that? So this is all beautiful little peaceful field of Huolongguo. Yeah, Huolongguo. Yeah, Huolongguo. I love Huolongguo and don't see a soul on the road. It's been a really lovely drive, kind of twisting, not too steep, winding into the mountains. And I mean, look at this. I, I, I'm not sure if I'm walking onto somebody's property here, but this is the kind of thing that I, I love to see in Taiwan. Look at this, just a nice little house. There's bird and owl murals all on the wall here. Did we go through a time loop or something like that? Look at this, just stacks of wood for the fireplace. And then, yeah, obviously it's, it is somebody's house. I mean, it doesn't get more peaceful and idyllic than this. I would say this almost looks like an old Japanese style residence. So the plan today is keep driving to Dolio and Unlin. Just check everything out. I guess the reason why I wanted to do that is because these are parts of Taiwan that I've never been to. And all around Kaohsiung, I think I've kind of exhausted all the possibilities there. I've just traveled around Kaohsiung area so often that I decided to take a train. Evelyn is waiting patiently for me down there and drive around to parts of Taiwan that I have yet to explore. Join me. So you can see here, this, this area must be great for growing Huolongbo, the dragon fruits. There's dragon fruit fields all around. They're more of a cactus. Made it to Dolio, and one of the reasons why we wanted to come here is this is Evelyn's childhood neighborhood. This is where she grew up. So we're just kind of walking down her memory lane, and she pointed out this little shop here, which I just thought is so typically Taiwanese. Before we had 7-Eleven or Family Mart or High Life, it just would have been tiny little shops like this. I think when my Uncle Gordon was here, hello, he would have shopped at places like this. And a lot of Taiwanese people 30, 40, 50 years ago there would have been no 7-Eleven or Family Mart and you would just have little mom and pop shops like this with all your super, super traditional Taiwanese snacks, childhood snacks. Just stuff that I've never heard of, but maybe some of you are very familiar with from your childhoods. <laughs> yeah. So when would you buy these kinds of candies? New Year's, Christmas? Oh, not Christmas. New Year's. New Year's. Moon Festival? Three for five dollars? Yeah. Wow. So they're all really inexpensive. How about this one? One for two NT? So even the prices, I think, are unusually low. Maybe they haven't really updated their prices. Like, these are one for two NT. So each one of these is just two NT. That'd be kind of like back when we were kids in Canada, we had like one, one cent candy and then five cent candy. Those are the good ones, the five cent candy. So that's that's kind of what we're looking at here. And then one thing I like in Taiwan is they just put the eggs in big, huge crates, unrefrigerated. I didn't even really live in Taiwan when shops like this would have been the only option for convenience store items. And even this is making me nostalgic. I can see bottles of very traditional Gaoliang Zhou and different kinds of rice wines, cooking wines, alcohol. We've got, you know, all your laundry supplies, tao mian, of course, many, many drinks, sugar, cooking supplies, canned goods, danju qi shui, mm. kind of little carbonated drinks. Yeah, and there's a danju in it. Oh, there's a little ball, right? Mm. Oh. Oh. There's a danju. Mmm. Good. <laughs> that 
lady was very, very nice. She, she saw us eyeing up the old traditional Taiwanese drinks and she gave us some to sample. I've never actually had this. I've seen my students drinking them and you just pop the top and then the little marble that you can hear falls down into the drink. It's kind of fun for kids, right? Anyway, I really wanted to show you this because just around the corner, uh, we've got this little area here. And if you look very carefully on the ground, you will see the old train tracks still preserved. So they've actually kept little sections of it. Obviously the train would have kept going that way and coming from that way. The new tracks and the new station is up here. And then here is the old station. I mean, look how old that is. I'm gonna do a train video soon. Either it's just released or I'm about to release it. And I was talking about Taiwan's train history and train culture. And talk about train history here. This was built in 1905, undoubtedly by the Japanese. And this whole Jai and Dolio area would have been pretty important for moving the wood down from Alishan Mountain to the harbor city, to the ports, and transporting all of that wood back to Japan. So little old stations like this would have been probably pretty busy back in the day. And even little old Dolio would probably be kind of a booming little town back then. Seems a bit sleepy these days, but it's still got that old charm that we can still see. I love how they've left this building up as is. You can just imagine, <laughs> this is not very tall. <laughs> not a lot of tall people back then. Look at this. This would have been the little waiting room. People waiting for their trains. Tiny little ticket counter. Wow, look at that. Probably this hasn't changed in 115 years. And you would have had your timetable here and caught your train. What have we here? Ah, so now it's a vending machine. But before this is where somebody would have sat and given you your tickets. And maybe this would have been the private officer's room or, or office. Oh, speak of the devil. Not stopping here today. Very, very cool. Next, we take a drive into the countryside of Unlin. Some might even call this area one of the bread baskets of Taiwan, where food is grown for literally millions of people around the island. Pretty iconic scenes of Taiwanese farmland and the water systems that run up and down, making sure all the farmers have enough water for their rice. We're literally driving through Taiwan's farmland. I mean, this is exactly where all the rice is grown all the vegetables, we saw digua, we saw like onions. As you can see, tons of rice, lettuce, all kinds of vegetables. Amazing out here, really green. Let's see if we can fly the drone. That would be really awesome. Unlin is an agricultural county where 68% of its total area is dedicated to farmland. This is due to its fertile land, abundant water supply, and good weather. It's also one of the least developed counties on the west coast of Taiwan. And in a way, these large open fields and endless seas of green remind me a little of where I grew up in Canada. Most of us in Taiwan live in these big crowded cities. So it's always such a pleasure taking a trip out to the true countryside and reminding ourselves how beautiful and rural Taiwan can be. And then back in Jai, we simply had to grab ourselves a bowl of chicken rice. Let me know if you live in Unlin. I would love to know what I can do next time I visit that amazing agricultural county. Well, that's it for today, everyone. Just a quick video and as always, lots more videos to come. Like and subscribe and I will catch you in the next one. Goodbye, everyone.